this beautiful beautiful sunday morning it's great to see you in the house of the lord welcome 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 uh, and i trust that we are all keeping well and keeping safe at this time hallelujah i said hallelujah Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're so grateful and thankful to God for how far he's brought us um, and the things that He is doing in our lives and in our church. It's simply, simply phenomenal. We're grateful for the testimonies. We're grateful uh, for, for the miracles. We're grateful for all the things, you know, that is happening in our church. Uh, we spent, you know, uh, some time praying and, and, and thanking him as well. And so we're just believing God that the rest of this 2021 will be the best of your 2021 in the name of Jesus Christ. All all right please don't forget tomorrow we continue our prayers next level prayers in the morning uh from 6 30 a.m uh to 7 30 a.m every weekday it's going to be really really powerful all the way through the week um it's been absolutely amazing the testimonies have been phenomenal and i just trust god that th those testimonies will continue and those things will continually manifest in your life uh and in your space in the name of jesus can you say amen also, we've been talking to you about growth track, and somebody wonders what growth track is. Growth track really is a track for growth, praise the Lord. So it is a track you go on if you want to grow. That's what it's called. So what you need to do is, after the service, if you just go to the teen's church, uh, it's the first door. If you step out to your left, you know, uh, by your left, uh, it's the first door there. You can ask for more information. They'll be happy to share as much information with you and help you know how you can grow and how you can build and develop in the things of god praise the lord i said praise the lord i said praise the lord you know one of the reasons why growth track is important is because of some of the things we've been talking about in this month uh, of um of of uh, july uh you know talking about the book of romans talking about the grace of god the plan of salvation and all those things uh those things are really very important um in the month of august we're going to be spending time talking about the holy spirit hallelujah i'm very very excited about that uh and but in this month of july as we delve into these things and talk about these things um you know one of the reasons why go track is important and we'll talk about it today is that if you understand a lot of the things that we'll be sharing with you today and throughout this month um your ability to stand firm in the things of God will be a lot stronger. Glory to God. I said glory to Jesus. So let's start this morning from the book of Romans chapter 1 from verse 1 to 2. I'm going to move very quickly because I have a lot to cover in a very short period of time but I trust God that you will understand and things will be communicated to you by the Spirit of God. All right so today we're talking about the man from heaven. Romans chapter 1. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto what? Come on church I need you to follow me. To, separated unto what? The gospel of God. Now, what is this gospel of God? Paul was separated unto the gospel of God. What is the gospel of God? All right, next verse. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. So this gospel of God was promised by God before time in the Holy Scriptures, right? Um, uh, through the prophets, right? Now, when he's talking about the prophets, it's technically essentially about the Old Testament. Because at this time, the New Testament had not yet been written, all right? So he was talking about the Scriptures. So anytime you look at the Bible and you see the word Scriptures, Pastor Komi talked about this on Wednesday, uh, is it, referring essentially to the Old Testament. All right, verse 3. Let's go, verse 3. Concerning what? His son who? Now, the gospel of God is concerning who? Now, the gospel is not about you. The gospel is about Jesus, not you. But Jesus has made us his center. Are you following me? The gospel is about who? Jesus Christ. So, the gospel is about Jesus. Now, the question is this. How is the gospel about Jesus when Jesus didn't show up until the New Testament? John chapter number 5, verse 39. John 5, 39. How is the gospel about Jesus when Jesus didn't show up until the New Testament? John 5, 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think. In other words, the Bible says that when you search the scripture, many people search the scripture because they think they will find what? Come on, church. They think they will find what? Uh -huh. It says, and they are there, instead of just finding eternal life, right? You don't just read the Bible and find eternal life. You read the Bible. When you read the Bible, you find they which testify of who? Why? Because Jesus, God, is the giver of eternal life. Are you following me? The Bible is about Jesus, not about us. But when you find Jesus, you find everything the Bible is talking about. That's why you can read the Bible and it won't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense. It's supposed to make revelation. 
I don't know if you understand. Have you seen people that read the Bible and they have all sorts of questions? Why? Because they read through the eyes of a storybook, not through the eyes of revelation. There's always a story behind the story. Whatever you see in the news, something has happened in the back that we don't know, that the news did not report. Do you understand? It takes somebody that has inside information to give you that information. Are you following me? So Jesus, that's why you look for Jesus first, not the Bible. You can't just pick up the Bible and start reading. It will not make sense. It's not designed to make sense. Glory to God. The Bible calls him the spirit of revelation. He breathes upon the word. He comes alive. All right, let's go. So, they are there which testify of me. Next, next, script, next scripture. Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. Luke 24, 25 to 27. We're going to run through a lot of scriptures. All right? Then he said to them, this was when Jesus had risen from the dead. All right? He was talking, you know, with his disciples. Then he said to them, O oh fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have what? So, what is everything that the prophets have spoken? Next verse. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory? In other words, the things that the prophet said were about Christ and entering his glory. Next verse. And beginning at where? What is Moses? Moses is the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and what? Deuteronomy. Right. So Moses wrote those first five books of the Bible. So he says, beginning from Genesis, Jesus did what? He began at the beginning of Moses and all the prophets. What are the prophets? Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, uh, come on now, um, Hab, Zephaniah, uh, all the ayahs and the, all these in the world. He says, beginning of Moses and all the prophets, he extended to them in all the scriptures. Remember, what do we say is the scripture? Huh? Old Testament. Okay. So he went through the entire New Testament, Old Testament, in all the scriptures, the things concerning who? So, in other words, everything the prophets were writing about was about Jesus. That is why, because somebody says, so how do you know and how do you see uh, 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 Jesus in the Old Testament? Let me just show you very quickly. Second, uh, Colossians chapter 2 from verse 16 to 17. How was Jesus in the Old Testament? Because if Jesus was not there and everybody wrote about him, how did they write about him? What does that mean? The Bible says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, in respect of holy day or the new moon or the Sabbath day. All these things were things that happened in the Old Testament. They had some Sabbath days. They had all those things, right? Are you with me? Okay. Now, which are what? Which are shadows? What is a shadow? A shadow is a representation of something else. If you look on this stage, my shadow is probably somewhere. But if you look at my shadow, you can tell the type of guy that I am. You may not be able to tell... You can't tell what I was wearing. You can tell what it looks like. But you can't really tell what exactly. If I ask you what's the color, by looking at the shadow, what will you say? Spiritual color. Why? Because the shadow does not really reveal the entire truth. The, 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 it's essentially, this is what it means. Many people in the Old Testament, because they didn't have revelation, what they understood was limited. The same way when you have a shadow, what you will understand about the thing the shadow is represented, representing is very limited. Am I right? So, what happens is that they were speaking based on the way they understood it. So, the Old Testament is types and shadows. The New Testament is revelation. The Old Testament is Christ, but revealed. I mean, concealed. The New Testament is Christ, but what? Revealed. That's why he says that we all with open faces, beholding the word of God as in a glass, we are changed into what we see. Why? Because in the Old Testament, they really couldn't see. That's why they had what they call types and shadows. For example, what is a type? A type is a symbol. So, when the Bible says that, I mean, there was an ark, Noah's ark, and everybody ran into it. It was a symbol of Christ. Christ being the one that when he comes, you run into him and you are saved. When the Bible says that they created a bronze serpent. And when you look upon that bronze serpent, the other serpent do not bite you. You look upon it and you are saved. That is a type of Christ. Why? Because looking unto Jesus, the author and what? The finisher of our faith. The Old Testament is laced with the script, with, with types and shadows of Jesus. What is a shadow? A shadow is a, is a, how do I describe it? It's, uh, it's not the full revelation. A, a shadow is like a parable. Jesus spoke to people in parables. Why? Because at the time, that was the only way they could understand him. Why? The Holy Spirit had not been poured out to give us revelation. 
So Jesus had to speak in shadows. For example, what is a shadow? The government shall be upon his shoulder and he shall be called counselor. He shall be called this. He shall be called... I don't know who he is, oh, but whoever that guy is. I, do you understand what I'm saying? He shall be this. He shall be that. He shall be this. The government shall... And all those types of things. Those things were shadows. Everything pointing to Christ. That is why the Bible is a Christocentric book. Anything in the Bible that does not point to Christ is not Bible. Remember, the gospel is about who? Is about who? Christ. So, shadows are unclear. Shadows are like parables. Jesus, the ark of Noah. Jesus was in the garden of Eden like the tree of life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the what? The life. Jesus, uh, the Old Testament, uh, uh, the rock, right? I mean, uh, glory to God, right? One of the reasons why God was angry with Moses was that when you hit the rock, it was supposed to represent that you, Christ will die once and he will save people. When Moses hit it twice, the reason God was angry was because he was trying to tell God that Christ will die twice. Why? The Old Testament is a type and a shadow of Jesus. So when the Bible says that the Bible has been talking about Jesus right from Genesis, this is what it means. Because things were happening to people and the way they were experiencing deliverance, right, was like the type of Christ. Jesus said to them, like Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days. What was he saying? It was bringing out all the types and the shadows and all the things that talked about him, but many people that didn't have understanding did not see. So in the Old Testament, they really didn't have that understanding. But in the New Testament, what happens? We have that understanding. The Bible talks about the Passover lamp, lamb, that when you put the door on the post, the blood on your signpost, what will happen? The angel will what? Pass over you. Exactly. So that is why when you are in Christ, the things that Satan sends are not supposed to touch you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? It is a type of Christ. Are we still together? Are you still with me? So, since the gospel is about Jesus, who is he and why did he come? Romans chapter 5. Glory to God. Romans chapter 5 from verse 12. Since the gospel is about Jesus, right? Who is he and why did he come? And why am I saying this? Because when you understand all these things, you understand who you are in Christ. Because when you say you are in Christ, what does that mean? What's the big deal about Christ? Who is this Jesus? Who is this Christ that we are referring to? Because when you understand who he is, you understand what you carry. Are you following me this morning? So, Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin... So death passed upon all men for all that, for that all have sinned. So the Bible says that uh, 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 there was a guy called Adam, right? And we've said it before. Adam is not just the name of a person. Adam is a position. Um, and that when Adam sinned, that sin transferred to everybody else. Now, let me try and explain it to you this way. Because, you know, sometimes even me, you know, earlier on I was wondering how did that happen? Until it occurred to me. I want to ask you a question. How do some things get from a father to the child. You know that if a man has bald head, it transfers to his daughter. Science tells us, right? Then from the daughter, it goes back where? To the, to the grandson. So, a man that has bald head, his son may not have bald head, but his grandchild will. Most likely. Abi? Okay, forget about that. AS, SS, all those things, right? How did a child that knew nothing about ASSS come into this world and carry something that was belonging to somebody else? I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The same way that can happen in the natural. What happened to Adam entered everybody that came out of Adam. Make sense? So that is how when Adam sinned, it got transferred to everybody. Glory to God. Some people have high blood pressure. I know you cause them. Why? Somebody carried it. In fact, how did the person carry it in the first place? However they carried it, what you know is that they transferred it to somebody else without the person's permission. 
So the Bible says that all of us have sinned, for unto the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there was no law. In other words, there was sin around, but we did not know about it because there was no law. We'll talk about that some other day. Next, go, let's, next verse. Next verse. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So however it happened, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of that sin. Can you see? So even those that did not have any issue, blood issue, when they were born. But because of the way it was transferred, it was not really their fault, per se. Are, you, are we together? <laughs> so, now, after a similar other transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? Next verse. Next verse. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much, so much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man Jesus, hath abounded to many. In other words, glory to God, glory to God. In other words, the same way Adam transferred the genes of sin to the entire human race. When Christ came, he transferred the gene of life to everybody. How did it happen? The same way I don't really know how boldness transferred from father to child. Jesus transferred. But I receive it. Praise the Lord. So, you don't go to hell because of what you did. You go to hell because of who you are. Why? Sin was transferred to you. So, it wasn't about you committed murder. It was in your blood. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So the same way, you don't go to heaven, quote and unquote, per se, because of what you did. You go because of who you are. So Christ is an identity. Christ is your ID card. It's about who is in you. Let me give you an example. Have you ever been to a hotel to check in, maybe to go and book a hotel? And when you're at the reception, you say, please, can I see the room? Then the reception lady tells the porter, Gives the person a key to go and open the room door. Are you with me? And you know, most of those keys are like ID cards. Those flat things. White like this, right? Am I right? Yes, now, but this guy, the key he brings out is not as fine as the one they will give you if you stay there. Have you noticed that? That key has been battered. That key has been tattered. But if you say that may I have my own key and you enter that room and you present that ca card, even though it is cleaner than that guy's own, will you open it's not about the presentation and the outlook. It's about what is inside. It is the chip on the inside of the card that the door responds to. Not the external circumstances of the card. What does that mean? That's why the Bible says, Christ in you. If you are looking for a door to open, the next time you get to that door, because of who is in me, this door is meant to open. It's not about what has happened. It's not about where I am. It's about who I carry. Look at someone and say, what do you carry? Because the problem is this. Many of us don't know what we carry. We think it's because somebody has slapped us. We think it's because life has battered us. We think it's because things have happened to us on the external. Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's not about what happens to you on the outside. He says, what is inside? Because the way the door opens is by what is inside. I know you've had series of abortions. But the way life opens for you is who you carry. Does that mean you should go and be a button? That's not the point. Uh, you understand my point? Let's go. Oh, glory to God. So, so why did Jesus come? Jesus came, right? And when you look through the Bible, you see all the reasons why Jesus came. One of the reasons why Jesus came, right, was to deliver mankind from sin. Remember what we said. By one man, sin entered the world. So therefore, by one man, Life is given to everybody else. So Jesus came. John chapter 10, verse 10. We'll get there. Uh, next, let, let's go to the next scripture. So the first reason why Jesus came was to save mankind from the sin. The second reason, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, for which purpose, was the God of God manifest, that he might do what? Come on, church, that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. So guess what? One of the other reasons why Jesus came was to destroy, was to paralyze, was to make of no effect the works of the devil. 
That's why sin cannot have dominion over you. That's why Satan cannot have dominion over you. Why? Because the reason Jesus came was to give you victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in power. I'm a walking victor. That's it. That's who you are. That's who you are. So Jesus came that he might do that. The other reason why Jesus came, John chapter 10 verse 10. He says that the thief, the, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come so that what? You may have life and have it what? Ah. OPP. If you don't know what that is, it's okay. You are a Christian like me. It's too much. It's too plenty. I came so that you might have abundant life and have it more what? Abundantly. I didn't come to give you small life. I didn't come to give you insufficient life. Ah, yeah, Bakata. Listen, there is no sin that you have sinned in this world that the blood of Jesus is not enough for. You don't understand. You have to, if, if what Christ did was not enough, you have to go and import your own blood. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Why did Jesus come? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Why did Jesus come? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. He came so that he could be our righteousness. In what we call the divine exchange. He took our sin so that he can give us his righteousness. The Bible says, For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. Right? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Referring to Christ. When I got born again, uh, or rather, because I got born again many times. I don't know which one you want to count. You know, I probably got born again like 13 times. I don't know. Am, am I the only one? Okay, thank you, Jesus. So I'm in, right, I'm in good company. So one of the times I got born again, praise the Lord. You know, one of the things they did for me was that they gave me, you know, this Gideon's book. You know, it's not Gideon's Bible. It's Gideon's book of Psalms and Proverbs. Old Testament Psalms and Proverbs. It's not Bible. It's Old Testament Psalms and what? Proverbs. All right. And they gave me an assignment. Right? They said everywhere, sorry, New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. They said everywhere you see in him, underline it. So I read the entire New Testament and I underlined every scripture where I saw in him. One of the things that did for me was that it helped me understand what I carry. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. See, if you, one of, that's one of the exercises I think you should do. Who you, knowing who you are, and what you have in Christ. So, Jesus came, right, so that we can have right standing with God. So that we can have right standing with God. So that we can be called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, second part of that question. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus, right? Because sometimes people say things like, who is Jesus? That is Jesus God? And I'm going to show you. John chapter 1 verse 1. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was what? And the word was what? And the word was what? Who was the word? <laughs> because the Bible says in verse 14 that and the word became flesh. Referring to Jesus. Am I right? If in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was what? And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. If he was God, he's still God. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God. See, why am I saying this? Eh? Some of you believe that we serve three gods. I don't know which Christianity you have. I serve one God. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be what? If A equals B, what does that mean? A is not less than B. And B is not greater than A. What it says is A is equals to what? B. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, right? See, even Jesus said, I and the Father are what? One. So who is Jesus? Jesus is God. Now, how is that the case? How can that be? Maybe I should show you this other one. Mark chapter 12 verse 29. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29. And one of the things you see here is that we refer to the book of John a lot, actually. And you know, one of the reasons, just for your 
just to tickle your theological fans, uh, you know, John was, you know, the theologians refer to him as the cheat out of the four, uh, you know, gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the reason why they say he was the cheat was because he wrote the book of John after he had had revelation. So after revelation, he now decided to write his own eyewitness account of Jesus. So he didn't start with all the scenario that Matthew started from, that Jesus started with the genealogy, and da, 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 da. he said, all those things don't mean anything. Let's start with revelation. Amen. See, that's why you should study your Bible. If you don't study Bible, what are you studying? Praise the Lord. See, one of the reasons, see, apart from helping you understand who you are in Christ, eh, these things should encourage you to go and study. I'm not saying go and read your Bible. Go and study your Bible. Because reading and studying are two different things. You read a newspaper, you study your books. You read a newspaper because nobody's going to set the exam for you. But if you know you want to pass from year one to year two, what do you do? Uh -huh. So, you go and that's why the Bible says study to show yourself what? Approved. It didn't say read. So, when you carry the Bible, and you hear, thank you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, open, 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 show me, show, show me. Psalms. Have you noticed that every time you do open and show me, you always land in Psalms. You know why? It's in the middle of the Bible. <laughs> That's just why. It's the longest book and it's in the middle of the Bible. Praise the Lord. So every time you open, oh yeah, Oluwa, feel on me. Show me, Lord. You just be singing. Every day we're reading Psalm, Psalm, Psalm. You have to rise above the mentality of the psalmist. Because when the psalmist wrote the Psalms, he was still in the flesh. Praise the Lord. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear ye, O Israel. The Lord our God is how many? Is how many? So you don't serve three gods. You serve one God. The best way I can try to describe it for you is this. I am a father. I am a business person. I am a preacher or a pastor. The, father, the person you see, ah, glory to God. Your revelation of me determines how you relate with me. If you see me as a pastor, oh, man of God, sir, how are you, sir? You are a bit more reverential. If you see me as a business person, maybe the way you look at me may be different. That, uh, you get your business, I get my business, all in our business. If you see me as a father, right, the way you will greet me, my kids don't greet me like the way church members greet me. Because if they did, there's a problem. Because what they are seeing, their revelation of me is pastor, not father. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, the same way I am the same person, even though I have three different or four different expressions, but I am still one. If they say, who is Deja Bwade? He is one. I don't know if you understand. So, the same way God is God, he is one. But inside, oh, Lord help me. I love the way a preacher puts it. He says, inside God, Jesus came out of God. It did not, God was still sitting on the throne because he has not moved. The Bible says he dwells in light, in light. Nobody can approach it. So Jesus came out of God. Then Holy Spirit too came out. Three of them are still the same person. So if you don't understand it, may God give you revelation. So that the ability of one does not diminish another one. I have a cutter. It's only in humanity that when you take something out of somebody, you reduce the power in, the, in where you are taking it from. Because the sum of the parts equals to one. No, in the case of God, because God is God. When he came out of himself, that's why he says, my Lord said to my Lord. God came out of God and came into the world and took on flesh so that he could die. Because if he was not flesh, he could not have died. Glory to God. I mean, I, I wish I had time. I will talk to you about, you know, the union. 100% God, 100% man. And the limitations. Because, because Jesus was also man. There were some limitations that he had. Why? As spirit, you can't manifest anyhow on the earth. What you need to manifest is a body. That's why demons look for who to possess. Because they can't manifest like they want to manifest. The best way I can describe it is this, right? It's like putting you in prison. You are not dead, but you can't do anything. I don't know if you understand. For you to do something, you must enter freedom. 
For demons, the human body is like freedom. Otherwise, it's like they're in prison. Who wants to be in prison? Nobody. Because you are restricted in your ability and capability. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, Jesus, when he came into man, hey, he chose, that's why it says that he, he, he stripped off his glory. He said, you this glory, just let's enter this man first and do him something. So, Jesus was without sin. Now, all these things I'm saying, all these things I'm talking about, why is it important? Let me close. Why is it important? Number one, I've already said it. Your revelation of God determines how you relate with him. If you think that God is three, your revelation is messed up. Because you know why? You know why it's a big problem? When you are praying, who are you praying to? Because in your mind, there is God the Father. Then there is God the Son. Then there is God the Holy Spirit. Three of you, please hear my prayer. No. Three of them don't need to hear. God has heard. He says, I am the God of how many flesh? Come on, church. Of how many? Meaning that there's no, I didn't give another part to another person. Everything, I'm the God of all flesh. He says, is there anything too hard for me? So, why is this important? Number one, right? Your revelation of God determines how you relate to him. Your revelation of Jesus shows you who you are. And knowing who you are helps you understand what you are entitled to. If they come and meet you today, and they said that, you know, sorry, there was a mistake. At, when you were born, the, we did some switching, and you are actually a prince, a crown prince, not of <clears throat> somewhere in the village. Oh. You are, maybe the, we are part of the royal family of Scotland. Allah bo shatter. <laughs> Glory to God. If police stop you, you slap him. Why? Knowing Akaba Hashka, I hope you understand this. See, what changed? Your physical environment has not changed. In fact, you, you are, your location, you are still in the gutters of Nigeria, wherever that may be. The only thing that changes is information. Ha, ha, ha. This is why you must study your Bible because once you get information, your behavior changes. Ah, Kaba A friend of mine went to see a lady one time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. He went to see a lady one time. And, you know, it, it was a pastor. So, he went to see a lady. They told her she had HIV and all of that. So, she had been behaving very sickly. You know, she, she will come. You know, even when the guy went there to see her, you know, she was like, oh, oh I'll soon die. Oh, she couldn't even sit down. She had to lie down. All that, all that, all that. My friend said, while he was there, they came back with another doctor's report. And said, sorry, it was a mistake. You don't have HIV. He said, when he saw the way this lady jumped up, child of God, what has changed? Did she become more powerful? Has she even eaten? But the information she received changed who she was. Listen to me, child of God. If you can be exposed to the word, that's why we're asking you to go for gold track. Why? When information enters you, you start slapping Satan. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. All power has been given to you. So when you see Satan, you'll be slapping him anyhow. All this oppression will stop. All this chasing you up and down will stop. Why? You know who you are. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Lift your hands towards heaven. Father, fill me up with the knowledge of you. In the name of Jesus. I want to know you more. I want to spend my life with you. Jesus, help me to know you more. Open my eyes, open my ears. Open my heart and help me to understand, help me to perceive. In the name of Jesus. When you have a revelation of Jesus, you bring ease into your life. When you have a revelation of Jesus, you know that your prayers are already answered. Because not because of you, but because of Jesus. When you have a revelation of who Jesus is and who you are, you know that you are recognized by demons. Why? Because you know who you are. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And thank you for the work that has been done on our behalf on the cross of Calvary. Sweet Jesus, I pray for everyone here. That more than ever before, they will have a revelation of you. In the name of Jesus. Breathe upon us, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said a believing amen.
Can you put those hands together for Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. God bless you. May be seated.